I will talk about the missing uh, the risk of bias due to missing evidence in network meta analysis by presenting the uh, tool that we have developed, which we call RobMan. So uh, the need for this tool and in general for um, something to evaluate the risk of bias due to missing evidence in network meta analysis comes from the fact that uh, there are methods, as you as you're all aware, there are lots of uh, different methods to assess publication bias, to so select outcome reporting bias in uh, pairwise meta-analysis. This, uh, or at least some of the methods, can also be used um, in the context of uh, network of intervention. However, um, this is probably not enough because of, of the way the relative treatment effects in network analysis are estimated, uh, which is using both the direct and indirect evidence. So, so uh, there, there was an, uh, and there is and still up to the uh, rigorous framework to assess this bias in uh, network pen analysis. Our tool uh, is sort of uh, the process of the Rodman tool is uh, somehow described in this flowchart. So it can be seen as a two stage if we wanna, if we can say that. So the first part is to evaluate the risk of bias in the pairwise comparisons. And we consider all pair, possible pairwise comparisons that can be made among uh, the intervention in the network. In, in this pairwise comparison, we evaluate the risk of the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns, which are respectively uh, what are commonly known as the selective outcome reporting bias and the publication bias. Then uh, with these two elements, we classify each uh, pairwise comparison as having uh, as being as with undetected bias or suspected bias with the relevant direction of the bias. And once we have this classification, these judgments for each of the comparison, we integrate them in the evaluation of the risk of bias for each of uh, the, the network estimates. Here we consider uh, three parts. The first one is the contribution of uh, the pairwise comparison and how they can bias the network estimate. So we consider the pairwise comparison uh, at suspected bias and also their direction, the direction of this bias. Then we consider the, um, the, any presence of small study effects in network meta-analysis and also an additional potential source of bias which comes from those unobserved comparisons, from those comparisons without um, uh, direct evidence, without data for the outcome of interest, which can lead uh, possibly to uh, suspected bias in the estimates. Then we, once again, uh, we classify the, for each estimate, uh, a level of low risk, some concern, or high risk of bias by taking these three elements into account. So I will. I want to show you more in practice how this process works, or so in in a real example, which is this one shown here, and uh, using a shiny app that we have developed to facilitate the, pro the process, which is available at this link, and that uh, automates some of the steps required by the development process. So first of all, the user can uh, upload their data. And uh, uh, then run the analysis, which are needed by the tool to uh, for some of the evaluation. So the analysis can take a a few minutes, uh, not a few minutes, but a few moments, depending on the size of your network. But we have it ready here. So first of all, you will get a an output to so a data summary, an output from uh, your uh, your network of intervention, as well as an output output from the both frequent system invasion network pen analysis and also network pen regression. But one I really want to show you is what the output of our tool looks like. So the first, um, first output, the first part that you will get is this pairwise comparison table where the pairwise comparisons are um, split into groups. The group of uh, the comparison observed for the outcome of interest, which are essentially the the one that you can in a network graph you can identify uh, with the edges, and 
then you the the indirect comparison though the comparison that you you don't see essentially in the network graph um, are split into either unobserved comparison which is uh, those comparison that for which you haven't found any studies in your systematic review not even for other outcomes so they are in a sense completely unobserved or they they can also there can also be um uh, unobserved comparison which are however observed for other outcomes so you have uh, in your systematic reviews you have found studies investigating this comparison not for your outcome of interest but for another outcome however in this example we don't have any so all the indirect are actually unobserved the first two columns here uh, also show you uh, then in this example all the studies identified all the studies found reported the outcome of interest if there were for example for ccta versus exercise ccg uh, some studies that did not report the outcome of interest uh, but reported other outcomes you would have found you would have seen it by the numbers here they would have been instead of one maybe two or three or more studies so because of these two reasons that uh, i've just described the known unknowns which as i said it's what's commonly known as selective outcome reporting bias um is essentially undetected for all the for all of the observed comparisons but um what we can assess in this example for all of the comparisons also for the unobserved is those uh, what we call unknown unknowns so let's say the publication bias the studies that um, are potentially missing but that potentially unpublished and here uh, to assess this the, the the risk for unknown unknowns we consider first of all a uh, qualitative uh, consideration uh, as described in the concrete handbook since these are for example um, uh, the fact whether we were able to include data from gray, gray literature or unpublished data or if there is previous knowledge of bias in that field or for that comparison and so on um, additionally uh, for uh, if there for comparison that have at least 10 studies one can also use techniques such as the contour and standard plot and uh, regression test for small study effects however in this case we don't have any comparison that have at least 10 studies and these are also secondarily to the uh, qualitative consideration once we uh, the user has done the these two parts the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns can reach a can synthesize the judgment by reaching the overall bias for each uh, pairwise comparison easily using the the algorithm that is behind the uh, Rotman tool by clicking this button here or if the user doesn't agree can also overrule the judgment once we have this we can move to the, the actual main output of interest of the Rotman which is the Rotman table where we can then evaluate the risk of bias for each of the network estimates. Here, the network estimates are split into um, mixed or indirect, uh, based on if they are estimating using only direct or both direct and indirect evidence. The first part is to consider the contribution of evidence coming from pairwise comparison with suspected bias and how this bias, if present, is uh, if it's um, how is this bias directed? If it goes towards one direction or if it's uh, uh, split um, in in the two directions. So uh, the user evaluates this by either uh, saying, uh, like in this in this case, in the first estimate, uh, that the substantial contribution for bias favored the first treatment, or there is no substantial contribution from bias because, as we can see, zero percent favoring um, first or second treatment, or it can also be, like in this case, balanced in the sense that it's split among uh, the two directions. There is uh, then, as I mentioned earlier, an additional um, risk of bias for the indirect estimates due to the fact that the absence of direct evidence for this comparison can lead to bias if the studies that are missing uh, are in, the studies are missing for reason related uh, uh, to their results, their unknown results. And this is just taking the previous assessment from the pairwise uh, 
comparison table only for the indirect estimates. So essentially for the indirect comparisons. Finally, we assess the presence of um, any presence of small study effects by looking at uh, and comparing the estimate from the network uh, uh, meta-analysis and the adjusted one from a network meta regression, which uses a, a measure of precision as covariate. In this um, case, the smallest observed variance. And uh, again, we can uh, uh, we report our evaluation in this column. Similarly to the previous table, we then uh, can um, reach an overall risk of bias for the estimate by using an algorithm which is um, at the core of the tool, which it can be done just by pressing. And once again, the user can overrule. So, uh, in summary, I presented you the first tool uh, or framework to evaluate the bias due to missing evidence in a network of intervention. I just want to say that this is also part of the cinema framework. Uh, that is the framework to evaluate the confidence in the network analysis results. Uh, the shiny app is already available at the link if you want to use it. And if you're interested in more details um, in how to run the process and the evaluation, I understood I only had a few minutes to show you. This is, these are uh, available at the, at, in a meta archive preprint with examples uh, and also referring to the app. Finally, I just want to thank uh, all the collaborators who helped me with this project and also thank you for your attention.